And we're back. But now that we got we got some drums. Let's make some bass. Bass, bass, bass. So before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up um, the sort of the mix profile for this whole thing, and it's going to be pretty similar to what we did with uh, with uh, level one. We're going to make a sidechain bus. Side. We're also going to make a sub bus because whatever base that we end up making, we're actually going to high pass everything in the side, and then we're going to replace the sub with an entirely separate sound. That's what's going to happen, and we'll explain all of that when it comes down to it. For me to know what I want to have for the, for the sub, I have to have MIDI from whatever basses I actually make first. Because the, the actual, the way that the things actually sound are going to be determined by, uh, you know, the quality of the actual, the mid, the mid bass is what they refer to, what they refer to it as. And by they, I mean people who produce this kind of music, the mid range bass. All the growly stuff because bass is something, especially sub bass, is just very low. You know, it's a sine wave, nothing going on. And then mid range bass is things are things that have a harmonic profile that is sourced from bass but are present in the mid ranges, which is just about every kind of bass that we that we like. So to begin, I think I'm going to do something FM esque. FM esque. You use Citrus for this. Double click on Citrus to get it. Are we using Patcher? Patcher is quite awesome. Patcher is an environment wherein I right click this to get the preset list like we did for Maximus earlier. Patcher is an environment that is essentially an abstract view of what a mixer does. If you think about a mixer that you see in DAWs, the entire form factor, the visual quality of it, and the workflow are all based on the analog mixer. Just that standard that has been present since just as long as audio editing and engineering has existed. Um, and this is relative, this is totally fine. You know, it's obviously, obviously it works very well and it's very intuitive in that regard. Patcher is an abstract version of that, which is to say it doesn't put any kind of visual, uh, based like analog workflow. It's just entirely this connects to that, connects to this, to get connects to that. And as apart from being just a different kind of workflow, it's also very it's also very efficient on space. Because I'm going to put this in mixer insert 21. I'm going to write to the side chain channels, and that's going to be side chain whenever I make anything. I, but I can put any kind of effect that I want on the end of this. And not only that, but I can split things. So right now I've done something that would normally require uh, three mixer inserts. One mixer insert to have the original sound, two to have a separate output and then the original audio, and then the third to merge back together again. So we're doing thing uh, something that would require three mixer inserts, but we're only using one. But we don't even need to be using that one. We could be in the master if we do all of our mixing in here. But I also want it to be sidechain, so it has to be in the mixer to interact with the things that are also in the mixer. But that's a very small price to pay for this kind of this kind of environment. So let's actually design a sound. FM is an extremely complicated process. At its core, it feels like it's pretty simple. Just the idea that, oh, one oscillator is modulating the other oscillator and it's pitch based and it's very, it's like really fast vibrato. That's not 100% incorrect, but there's just some weirdness about how it works that is difficult to kind of process on all at once. I'll give you a short version. The short version is that instead of modulating pitch directly, what it does is it modulates phase. You might be thinking, well, why does that work? Uh, now this, this is usually when, when I'm doing a private lesson that I ask the student, are you familiar with the Doppler effect? You you probably, if it doesn't come immediately to mind what that is, you have, you are familiar with it. You've you've seen it in action. If you are ever like on a road somewhere and you hear a car coming, and like maybe they're honking at something, or maybe it's a police car, and the sound gets higher pitched as it gets closer to you, and then it gets lower pitched as it gets farther away from you. As it turns out, if the source of the sound is moving, if it's going closer, farther to you, or or, or closer to you, or away from you, it will it will change the apparent pitch of the sound. And this is exactly the case if you modulate the phase of something while it's playing. You are essentially 
squishing or elongating the wavelength of a waveform by pushing the starting point of the next cycle. And that, if you do that, that creates the pitch modulation. This is why if you ever use Massive, you have the modulation oscillator, you have all the various targets, you have filter FM, you have ring modulation, and then you have phase modulation. Phase modulation is just FM. That's all that that is. And um, you might be thinking, okay, cool, that's why, is that, why is it complicated? Well, it wasn't immediately obvious when you're using the sine wave to do the, the modulating. Watch what happens when I use a triangle wave. That's not behavior that you would expect out of a triangle wave. That's behavior you'd expect out of a saw, of a saw wave or a square wave. But let's look, let's look what happens when I use a saw wave or a square wave. Get some clicks and not much else. And the reason why those shapes do that particular behavior is as a result of the phase business. And the short answer to that is that it's not the shape of the waveform that, determ that determines how the pitch is going to move, but it's the change in slope of the waveform that's going to change how the pitch moves. So, for example, in the, in the triangle wave, for example, triangle wave has n unchanging slope and then n other n changing slope. So we get one unchanging pitch and n other unchanging pitch. A saw wave has one unchanging slope, and that's it. And a square has two un flat unchanging slopes, but they're at zero degrees and 360 degrees, which are the, the same point. We get that. And a sine wave has an ever-changing slope, which means we get an ever-changing pitch. With this in mind, this should make FM a little bit easier to, to sort of intentionally do. Um, it matters in some very specific, specific uh, examples. One of those examples happens to be sort of the bass I like to start with when I'm doing this kind of style of music. Now, modulating FM is a result of changing the volume of the modulating operator. So in this case, the modulating operator is operator 2. If I change the volume of operator 2, I change the intensity of the FM. Citrus has a particularly nice uh, function for this, the mod tab. The way that Citrus works on the operators is that we have this row of parameters, and then we have a row of modifiers that do various different things for each of these individual parameters. It is not unlike how the, uh, inst the instrument properties tab works. We have a row of parameters, and then, our, and then our, a bunch of modifiers that we can apply to it. You can see how the, the design philosophy is carried over over time. Um, what the mod tab does is that it controls the overall volume input into operator 1 from every other operator. Right now, I've only got operator 2, but if I had every other operator involved, if I wanted to modulate this FM profile without using the mod tab, I would have to automate the volume of each of these individually. But because we have this mod tab, I can modulate only that, and it'll modulate everything. We're going to link it to mod X by doing this. This is a graph that represents the position of the mod X wheel versus the level of the parameter. Level of the parameter is vertical, position is, is, is horizontal. So this, this graph is saying that one to one, whatever the position of X is, is also the parameter of the value. This is what it sounds like when you modulate a sine wave by a sine wave at base level. This is what it sounds like when you modulate a triangle wave, or a sine wave by a triangle wave at base level. That should be a pretty familiar sound. And so should this when you modulate it by an octave higher. Even a sine wave for that matter. <laughs> anyway, the bass I like to start with is one where we have this. Is This is a fundamental tone. That is to say, it is the same level as the output oscillator. That is, that is also the same bass level. I'm going to modulate this by an additional tone that is a higher harmonic. Five octaves higher, in fact. Also a triangle wave. And we get a nice FM growl. Which I enjoy a lot. Yeah. 
Notice that when the the, the more FM that's engaged, the less that original sine wave is there. This is a big reason why you want to have separate subs for things, especially because there's just no sub when I am modulating high enough. This is pretty. This is a fine sound by itself, but I am going to put in some wave shaping. Still gonna turn down the output because it can get kind of loud. That's a nice sound. So let's actually write a line for it. What key do we want to be in? I was playing E. F sharp's pretty common. Let's do F sharp. Now, when I, when I especially when I'm doing super bro -y, you know, hard dubstep kind of thing, I generally start out by writing the drop. This is what I'm going to do first. Probably going to have more than one bass in here, but I'm going to begin by doing this first. Now, in Patcher, when you want to automate a parameter, you have to activate it first. When you activate it, it actually creates a little controller linking little knob here because you can introduce other controllers, such as uh, the peak controller, and you can have it output a controller type, and then you can link a controller like that inside Patcher, and that's how you link controllers. But while this is active like this, if you right-click it, you can create an automation clip. Same in here. Once it's activated, you can actually use it like a regular uh, parameter inside a normal plugin. Now you want you only want to make variations on this particular patch, and one easy way of doing that is that because we've separated the harmonic from here. By the way, I added a little extra harmonics in here just to kind of dirty it up a little bit. But because we've done that, we can now actually mod, we can we can FM this individual uh, oscillator by another oscillator by itself. <laughs> Now this one also has a mod tab, which I'm going to link to mod Y. And I'm going to use mod Y to kind of create a more varying modulation. <laughs> a little frog, doesn't it? If ever you've seen a project of mine where you see mod XY engaged on a citrus, this is precisely the uh, arrangement that I generally am using. I have a primary modulation that's mod X, and then I have some kind of secondary parameter that I'm controlling with mod Y. This is a, this is a very basic, uh, a very versatile FM base that I use in a lot of exam a lot of a lot of things. <laughs> Now 
now let's make another base in the next video.